Thank you very much, uh, girls, for the beautiful singing. I think it's uh, my turn now to speak. Uh, let us pray. Dear Lord, as we look into your word uh, and this topic, uh, we are so grateful to learn of what is going to come in the future and uh, we are so grateful that we have come to know Jesus Christ as the only way that through him our sins are forgiven and we are saved in the day of judgment as we look into this topic we pray that uh, you open our hearts and our minds to listen to your word in Jesus' name we pray Amen. Uh, good morning, everyone. It's got so nice to see you all, see your faces. Uh, we, for many of you, have been spoken on the phone a number of times, and uh, it's good to see that we still exist together as a community, even though we are stopped from seeing each other, and we are united in heart. Um, Today we are going back, I'm going to share my screen with you, I don't know what it's going to look like, but in my uh, computers I won't, I won't be able to see you all. So if there is something wrong with the technology, I, won't, I probably won't know. So I trust that Tony or someone will let me know by speaking up and then we'll try again. Now I'll share my screen with you. Uh, I presume you see my screen. Uh, today we, um, we are going to talk about the final judgment. This is a topic that is um, not very popular among the Bible teachers of our day. And uh, it's a, a topic that is not very popular in our generation because many people believe that God is... Uh, so merciful and uh, so gracious then he w and he would not uh, punish anybody because he is so loving and uh, there is no way around it in the bible um, because uh, hebrews nine twenty seven says it is appointed for men to die once but after this the judgment and the most common belief in the judgment day is the one about uh, uh, among religious people and among Christians and among everybody else that on the final judgment, God will weigh up my good deeds and compare that to my bad, bad ones. And if my good deeds outweigh my bad deeds, then I'll go to heaven. But... Uh, that, uh, that theory is nothing further from the truth because uh, that is not true. Uh, most Christians don't really know that there are two judgments. Judgments um, that the, the Bible teaches. If we have a look at this picture, the first judgment is uh, highlighted on the green it's referred to in the Bible as judgment seat of Christ. And that is the judgment of the Christians that happened immediately after the rapture. So all the Christians will stand before Christ 
And this judgment is not to deliver condemnation to Christians, but to assess our deeds in, on earth in order to be rewarded. So no one in this judgment is going to be condemned. The other judgment the Bible is referred to is the one called the Great White Throne Judgment. And that's highlighted on, on the red on that picture. And that judgment is the one we are talking about. This judgment is only non-believers uh, will be judged on the final day. It's uh, after the thousand-year millennium and before the new heaven and new earth are coming. Uh, all the non-Christians uh, who have ever lived will stand before God for the final judgment. And that's the one we are going to talk about today. And uh, our text for today is Revelation 20, verse 11 to 15. If um, I will I'll read, uh, I don't know what, uh, what it looks like in your screen, but I'll read it from my screen. Then I saw a great white throne and him who sat upon it, from whose presence earth and heaven fled away, and no place was found for them. And I saw the dead, the great and the small, standing before the throne, and the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged from the things which were written in the books according to their deeds. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and haters gave up the dead which were in them. And they were judged, every one of them according to their deeds. Then death and haters were thrown into the lake of fire. This is the second death, the lake of fire. And if anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. Uh, first of all, the place of the great white throne. Verse 11, and I saw a great white throne and him who sat upon it, from whose presence earth and heaven fled away and no place were found for them. Um, it is important to note that um, we must be uh, we must appear before the judgment throne. And let me uh, let me change my screen a bit because uh, yep. And the judgment throne will stand is the first one that we spoke about. But in here we think of the final judgment. Where is it going to happen? And the Bible is not very clear where it is. And uh, there are so many people um, speculate about where this will be, but we only know where it won't be. It won't be on heaven and won't be on earth because the verse says that the presence of Christ, heaven and earth fled away and no place were found for them. And perhaps the name is not very important what importance, uh, the, the place is not very important. What important though is the name. It is great, which speaks of infinite one who's, who is the judge. It is white, which speaks of the divine holiness and purity and justice. It is a throne, which speaks of the majesty of the one who has the right to determine the destiny of his creation. Secondly, the person on the great, great white throne. Verse 11, then I saw a great white throne and him who sat upon it. The person who sit on the great white throne is none other than Jesus Christ himself. Jesus said, 
The Father judges no one, but he has committed all judgment to the Son and has given him authority to execute judgment also because he is the Son of Man. John 5, 22, 27. Paul also said, God will judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ. In act, Peter declares that, that Christ was ordained by God to be judge of the living and the dead. In Acts chapter 10. So the person who sits on the throne, it is Jesus Christ. And people will stand before God, before Christ, and he will judge them. Um, the living and the dead. The spiritually uh, living, spiritually alive will be judged by, by Jesus in the judgment seat of Christ. And the spiritually dead at the great white throne of judgment. Jesus himself will conduct all trial and no one is better qualified. He did all he could to save man. And since man, since man rejected him, he must be the, he must judge them by him. Uh, he must judge them himself. Thirdly, the people before the great white throne. Verse 12 and 13, And I saw the dead, the great and the small, standing before the throne. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and haters gave up the dead which were in them. Verse 12 and 13. It is interesting to note Hey, I'm working between two screen, screens, people. See, all the people who ever lived will be awakened. People in the graves will be raised up, and people uh, who died in the sea will bring to, will be uh, arise as well and stand before Christ for judgment. And what is clear from this verse is that great and small, speaking of our social classes, there will be all sorts of people here. Um, there will be kings and queens and beggars and thieves from the prison and also people who sit in uh, synagogue and churches and every, everyone who has rejected Christ will stand before God. The fact that if I am a king in, on earth, that doesn't mean I receive a royal treatment on the judgment day. If I am a king on earth, I will stand next to the criminal who is in prison and be judged exactly the same. So people of all classes will be there. People of all religion will also stand there too. You know, Jesus said that on that day, people will say, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And Jesus said, um, I never knew you. That is in John 7. See, con contrary to the, of, um, to the popular opinion, believing a chosen, a chosen truth doesn't make it true for you. There is only one truth, and that is Jesus Christ. You either believe in him or perish. Our social standing doesn't account for anything. And we will be judged individually. Everyone will stand before God and give an account for every little act that you did on earth. Next, the purpose of the great white throne. And I saw, verse 12, and I saw the dead, the great and the small, standing before the throne, and the books were open, and another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged from the things which were written in the books, according to their deeds. Uh, verse 12 and 13, rather. It is um, interesting to note that there are a number of books 
And the Bible is not very specific about what those books are. But um, we have uh, indications from, from scriptures on what these books could be. Um, for example, there, there will be book of laws, for example. You know, in the final day, people will stand before God and give all sorts of excuses. And the people of Jesus' time thought that they will merit salvation by keeping to the law. And many Christians today uh, fall into the same, uh, same problem. But you know, uh, Paul says, by the deeds of the law, no flesh will be justified and in his sight. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 3, 20 and 23. Paul co goes on to say that salvation comes only through the submitting, through submitting to Christ and claiming his grace. As a result, there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Romans 8, 1. Anyone who stands before Christ, the judge, and claims to be justified by, by law will be condemned by the law. Only those who are in Christ Jesus will be found not guilty in the eyes of the law. There are also book of works. See, Revelation uh, 20, 13 tells us that the rebellious were judged, each one according to their works. Paul speaks also of those whose end will be according to their works, 2 Corinthians 11, 15. And Jesus said, the Son of Man will come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and he will reward each according to his work, in Matthew 16, 27. God will have a record of every moment of every person's life, things done in secret and everything done in public. By their works, they will be judged, and by their works, they will be condemned. And there could be books of secrets. The scripture makes it clear that although we may be able to hide things from other people, there is nothing we can hide from God. Jesus said, nothing is, sick in, is secret that will not be revealed, nor anything hidden that will not be known and come to light. In Luke 8, 17, Paul writes, God will judge the secret of men by Jesus Christ in Romans 2, 16. And Solomon says that God will be, bring every work into judgment, including every secret thing whether good or evil, Ecclesiastes 12, 14. At the great white throne, there will be no more secret. Every secret, the unsaved thing they have hidden safely will stand as testimonies against them at the great white throne. There could be books of works, of words rather, The scripture affirms that spoken words may act as accusers of the unsaved at the great white throne judgment. Jesus said, I say to you that for every idle word men may speak, they will give account of it in the day of judgment. For by your words you'll be justified, and by your words you'll be condemned. Matthew 12, 36 and 37. When people's um, excuses begin to pour out, the book of words will be opened. By their own utterance, they will stand condemned before the Lord. And then the, there is the book of life. The, the, our text say the book of life was open as well. The book of life is mentioned in various places in scripture and it's a very, very common. But to explain how it works is probably important to refer to a first century practice of the different cities. 
in those times, every city would have a register of all the citizens living in the city. If, if one of the citizens is uh, breaking the law and not complying with the standards of the city, his name will be blotted out of the register and ask him to move to find somewhere else to live. And that probably the same concept applied to the book of life. You think of the every person that is born to the world, the moment of his conception, his name is written on the book. And there are two different columns. The first column is the date of when he received Christ, when he becomes a believer and saved. And then another column which record the evidences of his genuine belief in Jesus Christ. And if by the moment you die, there is no entries into these columns, then your name will be blotted out from the book of life. And Jesus said, those whose name are not in the book of life will be blotted out. And then you are judged in the final judgment. And finally, the punishment at the great white throne. Verses 14 and 15, the dead and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. This is the second death, the lake of fire. And if anyone's name was not found written on the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. When the death in Hades, when death and Hades are cast into the lake of fire, the totality of sinful humanity is set. See, the second death is when we die. When we die, our soul goes to soul to, to Hades, and our body goes to the grave. That is separation, because the meaning of death is separation. That is the first death. And then there is the second death, which our, our text is talking about. When death and Hades are cast into hell, both body, which has been resurrected from the grave, and the soul, which has been kept in Hades, will be cast into the lake of fire to be separated from God forever. And this is what the second death John is referring to. So the people who stand before God before the judgment day, will die the second death. Both Matthew and Revelation clearly teach a lot about eternal punishment in hell. And Jesus spoke more about hell than about heaven. He said, the king will say to those on the left, depart from me, from me you who are cursed who are cursed into the everlasting fire, prepared for the devil, devil and his angels. And these will go to everlasting punishment in Matthew 25, 41 and 46. And Paul writes to those who do not know Christ shall be punished with everlasting punishment from the presence of the Lord, 2 Thessalonians 1, 9. See, picture... Scriptures offer very clear picture of hell. It is a place of torment, Luke 16, 20 and 28. A place of wailing and gnashing of, gnashing of teeth, Matthew 13, 42. A place where the worm does not die and the fire is not quenched, Mark 9, 48 in a place of fire and brimstone, Revelation 14, 10 to 11. In conclusion, we have the major differences between the judgment seat of Christ, where the saved will stand, and the great white throne judgment, where the unsaved will fall. The saved will have their fair share of sins and, sins and failures, but because they have placed their faith in Jesus Christ, the Savior, the record of the sins will be erased and the penalty of their sins 
will be paid in full. We see the proof of this everywhere in scripture. He who overcomes shall be clothed in white garments, and I will not blot it out his name from the book of life, but will confess his name before my father and before his angels. Revelation 3, 5. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who hears my word and believes in him who sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into judgment, but has passed from death to life. John 5, 24. Therefore, there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Romans 8, 1. Hell is no joke. The people who do not believe in Jesus Christ will be judged in the great white throne by Jesus himself. These people would have had their names blotted out from the book of life and they will be thrown to the lake of fire. But if you have Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you will not be judged in the final judgment. If you have Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you need to tell your friends and your loved ones who do not know him because the judgment of God is real. Hell is real. The lake of fire is real. And only way out is to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let me pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for such a, a strong message that we learned today. And thank you that you brought up us to know your son, Jesus Christ, and the salvation he has brought to us. I pray, Lord, as we as a church worship together, we want to offer our praises and our thanksgiving for what you have done for us, that you died on the cross on our behalf. Help us to share this strong message and as a warning to our friends and to our loved ones who have not come to know you. And thank you for the salvation you have brought to our midst. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.